Hello friends, welcome to another edition of Ed Talks with me, Mr. Edward, and recorded by Miss Bethany. Hey. This time around, we're going to be talking about these two gentlemen right here, the Brothers Grimm. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, black and white pictures, really, this is going to be boring. Hold on. The Brothers, who are the Brothers Grimm? Jacob Ludwig Carl Grimm, Ugh, that's a lot of names, and his brother Wilhelm Carl Grimm were born in 1785 and 1786. They were born in a small town in Germany called Hanau, um, and they were philologists, which is the fancy way of saying they studied language. Um, they and they were lexicon lexicon lexa. Lexicographers. <laughs> some big words. Mr. Edward is uh, having trouble with these, man. Lexicographers. What, either way, <laughs> what, what that means is they, they made and helped write dictionaries. Like, you're thinking, that's kind of, that's still pretty boring, Mr. Edward. <gasps> but look at this. The look. You can't see it. Uh, so the question up here is, it seems pretty random, but we'll get there. What is folklore? Take a minute. Think about it. Uh, it's like, I have no idea. Uh, according to the dictionary, folklore is traditional beliefs, legends, customs, etc. of a people, lore, and lore of a people. That just gives us more questions. What are legends? What are customs? What, what is lore? What is this? This is crazy. Maybe there's a word that I've underlined or highlighted that you could look at. Uh, but if you, if you pause the video, if you've thought about it, you still don't know, what about this phrase? What if I said, once upon a time? Huh. Maybe that has some ideas. Yes. The Grimm brothers wrote a lot of very famous fairy tales and folk tales. Over here, we've got Sleeping Beauty. Some of my friends probably know this one, Rapunzel. You know, Tangled, if you remember that movie. A lot of those, a lot of those fairy tales, even f stuff like Frozen, that's not a grim fairy tale, but a lot of these princess uh, movies and books and things are based off of the books that these brothers wrote. What's that one in the middle? Um, that's called a bunch of, it's, hold on, I actually have it in the book here. It's called the, do, 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 the, Mm, ah. Oh, I had it. Where'd it go? Oh, this is called The Pack of Ragamuffins. I have no idea what it's about. But I, I, I saw the word ragamuffins. Kind of reminded me of some of my friends kind of rambunctious and crazy. Um, <laughs> and the picture was just awesome. So I had, I had to put, put it up there. But it's actually called, if you're interested, the one in the middle is called... The pack of ragamuffins. Go ahead, call your siblings ragamuffins. Um, a familiar story my friends also might be with is uh, called the Frog Prince, or Iron Henry, actually. It's a strange name, but that's what the original version of it is called. In this book right here, The Brothers Grimm, 101 fairy tales. So, 101 of these ragamuffin -y books are in, in this thing right here. It's not how you use that word, but okay. It's not, it's not uh, magic. So we're going to read. The, 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 there, there aren't any pictures, unfortunately. Boo, sad. Um, there is a picture of this sweet, sweet owl, though. Ah, that's spooky. Use your but, imagination. <laughs> just use, yeah. Unfortunately, you'll have to use your imagination now. This is the Frog Prince. Um, it's only a couple pages long, so... Uh, you'll notice it's quite a bit different than the movie that you've seen, or maybe some of my friends have even read this book. It's a little bit different, so just get ready for that, alright? In old times, when wishing still helped one, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful. But the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, which has seen so much, was astonished whenever it shone in her face, close by the king's castle lay a great dark forest, Ooh. and under an old lime tree in the forest was a well, 
And when the day was very warm, the king's child went out into the forest and sat down by the side of the cool fountain. And when she was bored, she took a golden ball and threw it up high and caught it. And this ball was her favorite plaything. Now it so happened that on one occasion, the princess, princess's golden ball did not fall into the little hand which she was holding up for it, but on to the ground beyond and rolled straight into the water. Ugh. The king's daughter followed it with her eyes, but it vanished, and the well was deep, so deep that the bottom could not be seen. At this she began to cry, and cry louder and louder, and could not be comforted. And as she thus lamented, meaning really, really sad, someone said to her, What ails you, king's daughter? Your tears would melt a heart of stone. She looked round to, to the side from where the voice came, and saw a frog stretching forth its thick, ugly head from the water. That's already not very nice. Ah! Old water splasher! <laughs> is that is it you? She, said she. I am weeping for my golden ball, which has fallen into the well. Be quiet, and do not weep, answered the frog. I can help you. But what will you give me if I bring your plaything up again? Whatever you want. I have my all of my clothes, my pearls, my jewels, even the golden crown I am wearing. The frog answered, "I don't care for any of that. But if you will let me, if you will love me and let me be by your side, as your companion and playmate, and sit at your table and eat off your little golden plate and drink out of your little cup and sleep in your little bed, if you will promise me this, I will go down below." and bring you your golden ball up again. Oh yes, she said, I promise you all you wish if you will but bring me my ball back again. However, the little princess thought, how the silly frog does talk. He lives in the water with the other frogs and croaks and can be no companion to any human being. But the frog, when he had received this promise, put his head into the water, and sank down. In a short while, he came up swimming, with the ball in his mouth, and threw it on the grass. The king's daughter was delighted to see her pretty plaything once more, and picked it up, and ran away with it. <coughs> Ooh, boy. Wait, wait, said the frog. Take me with you. I can't run as you can. But what did he... But what did it avail him to scream his croak croak after her as loudly as he could because she did not listen to it but ran home and soon forgot about the poor frog who was forced to go back into the well again. The princess doesn't seem very nice. She's not fair. The next day when she had seated herself at the table with the king and all the quarters and was eating from her little golden plate Something came creeping, splish, splish, splash, splash, up the marble staircase. And when it got to the top, it knocked on the door. Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. She ran to see who was outside. But when she opened the door, there sat the frog in, in the front of it. Then she slammed the door in great haste, sat back down, and was quite frightened. The king saw plainly that her heart was being was beating violently and said, My child, what are you so afraid of? Is there, uh, is there a, perchance a giant outside who wants to carry you away? No, it is no giant, but a disgusting frog. What does a frog want with you? Ah, dear father, yesterday as I was in the forest sitting by the well, playing, my golden ball fell in the water, and because I cried so, the frog brought it out again for me, and because he so insisted I promised him, he would be my companion. But I never thought he was be able to come out of the water. And now he's outside, and wants to come in. Princess, princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Do you not know what you said to me yesterday, by the cool waters of the fountain? Princess, princess, open the door, said the frog. Then said the king, that which you have promised you must perform. 
Go and let him in. She went and opened the door, and the frog hopped in and followed her step by step to the chair. There he sat and cried, Lift me up beside you. She delayed until the king commanded her to do it. When the frog was once on the chair, he waited to be on the table. And when he was on the table, he said, Now push your little golden plate nearer to me, that we may eat together. She did this, but it was easy to see that she did not do it willingly. The frog enjoyed what he ate, but almost every mouthful she took, she disgusted her. <coughs> Yuck! Frog germs. <laughs> At length, he said, I have eaten and am satisfied now. Now I am tired. Carry me into your little room and make your little silken bed ready, and we will both lie down and go to sleep together. Ew. The king's daughter began to cry, for she was afraid of the cold frog, which did not like to, she did not like to touch, and which was now to sleep in her pretty clean bed. But the king grew angry and said, He who helped you when you were in trouble ought not be despised by you afterwards. So she took hold of the frog with two fingers, yuck, carried him upstairs and put him in the corner. But when she was in bed, he crept to her and said, I'm tired. I want to sleep with you. Lift me up or I will tell your dad. Then she was terribly angry and took him and threw him at the wall. Yee, crazy. Now you will be quiet, odious frog, she said. But when he fell down, he was no longer a frog, but a king's son with kind eyes. And it came to pass, with her father's consent, he became her dear companion and husband. Yes. He told her how he had been bewitched by a wicked witch, and how no one could deliver him from the well but herself. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, right, Khan? And that tomorrow they would go together into his kingdom. Then they, want, then they went to sleep, and the next morning, when the sun awoke them, a carriage came driving up with eight white horses, each who had an ostrich feather on top of their heads, and were harnessed with golden chains. And behind stun, stood the king's young servant, Faithful Henry. Faithful Henry had been so unhappy with his master who was turned into a frog that he, had, that he had caused three iron bands to be laid around his heart, lest it should burst with grief from sadness. The carriage was to conduct the young king into his kingdom. Faithfully, Harry, Henry helped them, the princess and the, and the frog, or the frog prince now, both in and placed himself again and uh, and placed himself behind again and was full of joy because of his de this deliverance so now prince henry is happy because er bleh, the helper henry is happy because the prince is, is uh, better again and when they had driven a part of the way the king's son heard a cracking behind him as if something had broken so he turned around and cried, Henry, is the a carriage, is it breaking? No, master, it is not the carriage. It is a band for my heart, which was put there in my great pain when you were a frog and imprisoned in the well. Again, and once again, while they were on their way, something cracked, and each time the king's son thought the carriage was breaking. But it was only the bands which were springing from the heart of faithful Henry, because his master was set free and was happy. The end. So my friends, obviously a little different. You know, in this one, the, the prince doesn't turn into a prince until the princess is mean to him and throws him against the wall. And, uh, you know, they do get married, and I it doesn't say so, but I, I, they, I assume they live happily ever after, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty different, right? But anyways, my friends, that is just one of the awesome um, books that you can find from the Brothers Grimm. And next time you pick up one of those fairy tales, take a look at it. See, see if they wrote it. Anyways, I will see you next week. Till then, bye!